Seriously, Justin's gonna die. The Rangers arrive on the beach at night and the warriors from Divatox's ship come out on jet skis. They have Jason and Kim knocked out. Tommy demands that they bring them closer first, but Larago disappears just as the Rangers are trying to figure something out. He reappears in front of Elgar, going with him. They demand that they release their friends, and Elgar says, swim for him. They toss the limp bodies into the water, leaving back to the submarine. Tommy and Adam make it to the first one, and they're just fake dolls. Adam tells them that they're gone and that they've been tricked. They have to go figure out what the hell to do next. On the submarine, Divatox is trying to use Larago's crystallized wand, but it's not working. She yells at Larago that he's going to have to be the one to make sure they get through the Nemesis Triangle. They move out, and Larago is put into a different cell from the rest of his family. Then Divatox is talking to herself about how her plan is going to be going this way and yada yada yada, but then a fly is buzzing around her, and then it lands on her, and she freaking eats it. She keeps saying how she's going to sacrifice Kim and Jason to Malagor. Speaking of who, they're listening, and Kim is pretty pissed off that they came back to surprise everyone, and this happened. Then, in the power chamber, everyone is working hard, and Zoran says that they're making new Zords for themselves. And Tanya brings up a good point. They're just ordinary cars. Zordon ensures that, uh, no, they're cool, trust me. They actually will come together to form the Turbo Megazord, allegedly the most powerful Megazord yet. Adam has Desert Thunder, a green van. Kat has Wind Chaser, a pinkish-whitish sedan. Tanya has Dune Star, a yellow SUV. Tommy has Red Lightning, a red sports car. They ask about Rockies, which is the Mountain Blaster, a blue all-terrain vehicle. It will stay behind for now. Alpha reminds them that once they're in the Nemesis Triangle, they won't be able to contact the Power Chamber. They then see a color-coded circle that have their new Turbo Morphers on it. They will need to use the five keys with their new Morphers as they are similar to the Golden Keys slash that wand that Larago has. They will use them to get through to the Nemesis Triangle. The Rangers reach out to accept their destiny and they're hit hard with beams of light, morphing into their brand new suits. The Rangers leave coming out. Alpha says that the Zords are ready to go and Zoran tells them to go to the Ghost Galleon, a phantom ship that will take them through to the Nemesis Triangle. With the keys, they'll be able to get there. They won't be able to be detected at all by Divatox. Here's a question. How are they going to pass through when no one grabbed that fifth key? Whatever, it's time for a cool car driving montage in the desert. Tommy gives us a new catchphrase by yelling, SHIFT IN THE TURBO! Back in the power chamber, we see that Zordon is talking to someone referring to them as the newest Power Ranger. They are the new Blue Ranger, morphed already, and they're getting into the Mountain Blaster to leave. In the submarine, Divatox is happy with how things are going, but Elgar realizes that Larago is starting to kind of struggle, saying, I'm not a veterinarian, but I think it's dying. <laughs> The Rangers saw in blue show up at the dock where they can't find the ghost galleon in the distance. Then Tommy just finds it super easily by like walking three feet forward. Also, it's already in the water. How the hell are they supposed to board this? Doesn't matter because the mountain blaster shows up and someone comes out of the car. <sighs> it's freaking Justin. Apparently, Rocky had this really stupid idea to send this 12-year-old kid to the power chamber to take on his new powers because Rocky is just really trying to screw over everyone. Justin delivers the famous line of, Guys, I'm the new Blue Ranger! Isn't that cool or what? Also, apparently Alpha had to give Justin a crash course on how to drive a car, talking about how you don't need a license to drive a Zord. Well, maybe you should. He then asks why they're even there, which means Zordon Alpha explained absolutely nothing about this, just sending this child to his death. Tommy says forget it, they have to get the cars on the ship. They somehow park them in the ship, getting out. They decide to come up from below, and they're checking out the ship. Then a door slams on his own, scaring them. Justin finds a box screaming about how he found something. Shut up. Tanya says to open it, and they do, finding keyholes for them to enter their new morpher keys. They do it, and it starts to light up. Then Adam sees that the compass is moving, which makes zero sense. Then the sails start raising by themselves while Abel is hit by itself too. Also, the wheel is turning. I guess his boat's just going to sail itself on its own. The Rangers just watch as the sun rises. Meanwhile, in the submarine, Divatox looks in the mirror, telling herself that she's not fat. Then the alarms go off and she says, Hell's Bells, which is insane for Power Rangers. Then Elgar says that there are five people coming their way, but there is no vessel detected. Divatox has a good point. What are they, swimming? Also, didn't Zoran say that they wouldn't be able to be detected? I guess being in the ship doesn't count if you still have five human bodies. Then Divatox says, screw it, I'll give them something to do. She hits a button on the control panel, and four big turd pods float to the surface. Night falls again, and on the boat, the pods are breathing as they attach themselves to the ship. Kat comes up from down below looking for Justin, and a pod is behind her. She asks why doesn't Justin just come down and hang out with the others. Justin explains he's so excited, and he wants to tell his dad and the other kids at the shelter, but he knows that he can't tell anyone. Then the pods grow big. His dad is apparently up north because he had to close down his martial arts studio when his mom died, and his dad just couldn't focus anymore. Justin says a heart-wrenching bit about how when his dad finds the thing that's been missing from his life again, they can be a family again. Whoa, Jesus. Cat explains that they're his family now too, and also Power Rangers need their sleep. 
The pod on the ship begins to birth some slimy, gross creature, by the way. Cat rejoins the others down below, letting them know that Justin's fine. Then the creatures are starting to walk around the ship, stalking toward Justin, who is too busy looking out at the ocean, but it's also night, so like, what can he even see? He turns around and Justin tries to call for help, but he's so scared he can't yell. Then Adam somehow hears something and he comes up. Justin kicks a creature in the face and Adam does a sick flip. Adam calls out for the others. They join them and oh my god, I low-key love this fight because they're using the environment and Tanya does this cool kick thing that we've never seen her do before. Also, Tanya grabs a rope net, using it to get rid of a monster while Adam punches one in the face over and over again, getting slime all over his hands. Then Tommy literally says boo to one, scaring it off the boat. Okay, that was stupid. Then Tanya says, this sure ain't the love boat, which is funny, but of course, Justin has no concept of what the love boat is. Meanwhile, Jason and Kim are trying to protect themselves on the submarine, and Jason sees a panel on the wall. He says that instead of trying to make weapons to defend themselves, they should just remove the panel and escape. Kim brings up a good point, though. That means all the water would come in. Jason agrees, that's how that works, yes. He says that according to his dive computer, which he has for some reason, they're at 435 feet underwater. The closer they get to Moranthius, the submarine is going to climb. Once they hit 100 feet, they'll pop it off the wall and escape. Kim says, and make it up all in one breath. And Jason explains that it's kind of like their only chance, so deal with it. They start to disassemble the panel, which is starting to let water in a bit. Then Deutox announces that they're coming close to the Nemesis Triangle. Then the panels start to spray water all over them, and Kim and Jason say that they're going to have to wait until they actually pass through the Nemesis Triangle, which they hope happens quickly. I feel like they should have waited here to start this whole thing. Meanwhile, in the Ghost Galleon, the Fire Rangers see the Nemesis Triangle. Also, Deutox is stoked because it's time. Then the alarms start going off in the submarine and Kim says that the room is filling up. Lightning is striking at the rangers on the ghost galleon and on their ground, obviously scared. Then Divatox tells Larago to open the gateway, but Larago says no. Divatox then demands that Elgar grab the baby from Yara, which obviously freaks out Larago enough that he actually calms down and silently agrees to just open up the damn gateway. Divatox gives him his wand and he uses it, creating the gateway they need to transport through the Nemesis Triangle to the other side. Meanwhile, Jason goes to go get the pipe from underwater as the room is filling up and he starts to pry the panel off. Then Bulk and Skull ask if they're gonna go swimming, and Jason freaks out on them, telling them to shut up so that he can focus on getting them out. I mean, come on, Jason. I know that you're stressed out and all, but like, come on, man. Then, up in the submarine, Divatox starts to freak out because they realize that they're actually sinking, and a funny little moment, Elgar's on the phone with someone, and he says, uh-oh, we're sinking, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and he hangs up the phone. We'll get into this as we start the series proper, but let it be known to one and all that I think Elgar is one of the absolute funniest characters to ever come into Power Rangers. The Rangers then realize that they have to get downstairs on the Ghost Galleon and Kat says that she'll go get the keys. They meet up downstairs together and we see a barrel teetering. They're about to put their keys together when the barrel comes off, hitting Justin in the shin, making him drop his key. He dives for it, grabbing it. The five then put their keys together, creating a light, and luckily it works as they pass through the Nemesis Triangle. Imagine this didn't work and this is when all five rangers just like exploded. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jason and Kim have removed the panel from the door and they swim back up for air, gasping for breath. Also, Bulk and Skull somehow aren't drowning. Then they get those two by just turning the door for the compartment that they're trapped in and they set Bulk and Skull free. I feel like they could have done that a long time ago. All four go back to the surface once more, getting air again. Jason tells them that they have to exhale slowly on their way up to the surface. Bulk is the first to swim out, followed by Skull. Then Kim starts to go and her freaking shirt gets caught and she panics for a second. Jason frees her and Divatox realizes where the water is coming in. She makes Elgar activate the emergency hatch which closes the door on Jason. She then empties out the bilge and she looks down to find that Jason is alone now and she realizes that uh, Malagor would just have to do with one sacrifice. On the ghost galleon, Justin yells, Land Ho! And the rangers look out to see the lost island of Moranthius and Adam explains that Malagor is inside the volcano there so they have to be going that way. Tommy says that's where they'll be going as well. In the submarine, Elgar says that this overgrown ham hamster isn't looking so hot. Then Rodgog finds out that there are five humans coming their way and Jason explains how he knew that the Power Rangers wouldn't let him down. Divatox then says that she has to figure out how to get rid of the Power Rangers and she picks up the phone. In a fantastic cameo, on the line is Rita Repulsa who's woken up by the call. Divatox even apologizes because she forgot about the time change. Then she asks her for advice on how to get rid of the Power Rangers and Rita Repulsa says, if I knew that, you think I'd be lying here listening to this? And she puts the receiver to a snoring Lord Zed's mouth. Then she says, my advice to you, Divatox, run! <laughs> she laughs at her hanging up. It's a shame they aren't actually gonna do the whole we're back thing from the last episode of Zeo, but this is pretty good. Angry, Divatox hangs up the phone. Then we see that Kim is on the beach of the island waking up with some stereotypical racist natives coming up to her, pointing weapons at her face. Bulk and Skull are hidden nearby watching this. Apparently the natives pick her up, carrying her away, and then Bulk and Skull get chased away by some natives as well. On the ship, Tommy can't get a lock on Larago. 
Adam says that since his car has to be the first out, he'll drive it to the top of the cliff to see if he can get a better look at anything. He then just drives his car out and I have to wonder how this logistically worked while filming. Also, Bulk and Skull are still getting chased by the natives before they get cornered, so they point up, tricking the natives to look away before they just keep running. Adam has reached the beach as Divatox decides to just fire some torpedoes towards the rangers. Adam has parked his car on top of the cliff and he says that everything looks cool. Then he uses his binoculars to see the rangers have torpedoes coming toward them. The others see this on the turbo navigators and they rush to their cars. Adam tries to get in contact with them just as the ship explodes. And Adam is pretty panicked, looking on as Divatox laughs evilly. 